Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In my last video, I talked about the latest improvements to the recently released Photo Lab 7, foremost of which was the newly revamped Local Adjustments panel, which really improved the overall editing experience. If you are a new DxO user, you will find DxO's masking tools among the best in raw editing. However, the many choices, multitude of settings, and unique operation might make some wonder which is the best tool to use or which one to use in particular situations. If you have these questions, stick around as in this video, I'll be counting down the top five masking tools in DxO Photolab 7. So let's get right into it. At number five, is the graduated filter. The graduated filter simulates an optical graduated filter fitted to a lens. It is useful for balancing the exposure of landscape photos and reducing the extreme contrast between a brightly lit sky and a dark foreground. With the graduated filter, you use the eraser to remove the graduated filter effect from the elements. In Photolab 7, all the masking tools can be found by clicking the Local Adjustments button in the right panel. The graduated filter has the following elements, a solid line, which defines the starting point of the graduated filter, a dashed line indicating the center of the mask, which you can use to rotate the filter, and a overlay indicates how the mask is applied with its gradient. The effect starts off at its most intense and gradually fades off towards the dotted line. So as you can see, the graduated filter works pretty good. So why is it only at number five? Well, first, DxO has a much better version of a graduated filter called a control line, which we'll be talking about in a moment. Second, if there are any foreground elements obscuring the sky, those elements will be affected by any local adjustment you make. The graduated filter lacks any mechanism to distinguish between the sky from the foreground objects. Third, while it is true that you can exclude masked areas from the graduated filter using the Erase tool, the Erase tool has no built-in edge detection to ensure precise erasures, increasing the likelihood of having errors in your edits. So those are some of the problems with the graduated filter. Let's move on to the next tool. At number four is the brush tool. The brush tool allows you to retouch a mask by simply painting over it. It is a universal tool that lets you perform a range of tasks, including lightening a backlit subject, enhancing the color of a single flower, or increasing the sharpness of a subject's eye. You can change the size, feathering, and opacity of the brush. With the brush, you activate the eraser by holding down the Alt key while brushing the area. So what are the strengths of the brush tool? As you can see here, the dynamic range, highlight, and shadow recovery of this tool is excellent, but that is true for the graduated filter as well and all the masking tools of DxO. So why is this tool only at number four? The main reason is there is no edge detection in the brush tool, making it very difficult to create a precise mask. Also, there is no performance or responsiveness benefit using the brush tool over other DxO's smarter tools. I would use the brush tool in situations where a precise mask is not a necessity, such as when performing local HSL adjustments, which is a brand new feature as well of Photolab 7. The tool is also hampered by the fact that you have to use the erase tool to subtract from the mask, and that as well has no edge detection built in. So that was the brush tool. Let's move on to the next tool. At number three is the automatic mask tool. The automatic mask tool allows you to paint and apply adjustments 
in specific areas of the image without going beyond any edges, which are defined by a difference in luminosity, contrast, and color. The automatic mask tool has built-in automatic edge detection. It is used in the same way as the brush tool. So why is the automatic mask tool ranked higher than the brush tool? It is because it works exactly like the brush tool, but with one significant advantage, and that is built-in edge detection. Why DxO needs to keep two separate tools, which are alike in practically every way, is beyond me. So what are the strengths of the automatic mask tool? As mentioned, it allows for precise masks to be created. Second, it is fast, lag-free, and responsive. But that is true of any of DxO's other tools as well. What are its weaknesses? As you can see here, unlike raw editors with better brushes, the automatic mask tool does not visually reflect the edges being detected in the mask that it shows. So it is impossible to see any masking errors by the visual appearance of the mask. I am not sure how others do it, and DxO gives no guidance on the recommended process. But personally, I resort to increasing exposure to check for masking errors. It's not the most elegant workflow, but it works. Finally, and strangely, the automatic mask tool, which has built-in edge detection, relies on the erase tool, which has no edge detection. So while you can paint precise masks on a subject, you can't have the same accuracy erasing a mask. That was the automatic mask tool. Let's move on to number two. At number two is the control point. The control point works in a specific way. When you click in the image to create a control point, the tool analyzes the luminosity, contrast, and color of the pixels at that point and then applies the correction to all pixels with the same characteristics within an area you define. You can apply as many control point masks as you want. You can also use them in an image that already has other types of local adjustment masks. So DxO's control point is the second best masking tool. What are its strengths? First, its operation is much less time consuming and requires less effort than brushing to create precise masks. As you can see here, it works just like a radial gradient, except that it takes into consideration luminance, color, and contrast of the central point in the circle. It is much smarter and more effective than any other radial gradient tool found on other raw editors. Third, it does not work with the erase tool. Instead, it caters for negative control points, which operate similarly to the control point, but instead of adding to a mask, it protects an area from further adjustment. It's a much smarter and more precise mechanism than the erase tool. And that brings us to the number one masking tool, the control line. The control line has features of a control point and graduated filter. It covers the entire width of the image. Pixel analysis is done with the eyedropper tool. It supports erasure or protection from the effects of an adjustment through a negative control line or negative control point. As someone who loves to shoot landscape photos, the control line is the top tool I would use and personally recommend. The control line works like any gradient tool, except that it's much smarter and more accurate. What are its strengths? First, just like the control point, the control line performs pixel analysis and takes into account luminance, color, and contrast when creating the mask and calculating the adjustments. However, better than the control point, where the point of analysis is fixed at the center of the circle. With the control line, the point of analysis can be moved through the eyedropper. Second, because it applies the mask throughout the width of the image, you don't have to do the tedium of creating and sizing multiple overlays while taking care to overlap them precisely for an even adjustment. Third, you can protect areas from any adjustment 
by putting negative control lines or negative control points. In conclusion, the control line is the do-it-all masking tool and the number one tool DxO has in DxO Photo Lab 7 for local masking. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do let me know what masking tool is your favorite with the new Photo Lab 7. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.